I'm Andrea Williams. I'm the executive director of CAUSA. We are an immigrant rights organization based here in Oregon. And I'm joined today by a whole lot of people, uh, most notably Multnomah County Chair Deborah Kofori, uh, Multnomah County Commissioner Jessica Vega Peterson, Sheriff Mike Reese, uh, the members of the ACLU, um, the City of Portland, as well as members of the One Oregon Coalition. And we are here in response to President Trump's recent immigration executive orders that just came out today. Uh, today, our nation took a destructive turn in our immigration policy. The Trump administration announced that it is issuing two executive orders. One is on border security, including plans to build a physical barrier along our southern border to increase detention at the border and to end catch and release. The other is on interior enforcement, restoring the Secure Communities Program, and threatening to strip federal funding from sanctuary cities. And that will be the precise topic that we'll focus on today due to its impact on our local community here. Neither of these executive orders is a real solution to our nation's broken immigration system. And it won't make our country safer or foster an inclusive America. Instead, it will waste pa taxpayer dollars, tear families apart, and foster a climate of fear. Today, we stand united in support of our immigrant communities. We also will remain united for our refugee and Muslim communities. Oregon has a 30-year history of separating the use of our local resources from federal immigration enforcement. That's because in Oregon, we believe that every resident should be treated with equality and respect regardless of their national origin. In response to Trump's promise to deport two to three million immigrants when he takes office, the city of Portland and Multnomah County, which are home to the state's largest immigrant communities, reconfirmed their commitment to existing separation policies. And they're joined by more than 40 local jurisdictions across the country that have stood together with their immigrant residents. These policies seek to devote local resources to local priorities, ensure that all individuals are treated equally, regardless of their citizenship status, and uphold the Constitution. Sanctuary policies are about preserving local resources for local priorities rather than volunteering assistance in immigration enforcement. As a community, we recognize that immigrants are our coworkers, neighbors, friends, business owners, and community leaders. Everybody who calls Oregon home and contributes to our state deserves to live with dignity, respect, be protected from harm, and be treated equally under the law. So as community organizations, we stand together with the city of Portland, with Multnomah County commissioners in their commitment to keep families together. And so it is now my distinct honor to invite uh, Multnomah County Chair Deborah Kofori to speak. We have a variety of speakers today and then we will end with Q&A for the press. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, for coming today to show your solidarity and your support. Today we are learning about new efforts to threaten immigrants and refugees and to undermine the core values that bind our county and our country together. Yeah. I am here to tell you today that we are not going to turn our backs on the most vulnerable people in our community because Donald Trump is threatening us. And it doesn't matter if those threats are being made on Twitter or with an executive order. We are here to tell members of our community that we will stand up for you. The Multnomah County Commission has been and will continue to be committed to the work of promoting community trust, safety, and stability. We need to fight against hatred that aims to tear us apart and set us against each other. And we need to persevere against violence, which ruins lives and scars our future. At Multnomah County, we believe that every resident should be able to live and thrive without fear. We will continue to provide the vital services and safety net that our community needs regardless of race, gender, religious affiliation, or immigration status. But I felt it was important for our community to know that Multnomah County will do what we have always done, follow the Oregon Constitution and the policy of directing local resources for local priorities. We cannot allay every fear, and we don't have all the answers. 
but we can affirm the commitment of our staff and the policies of this county that are and will be focused on supporting the health and well-being of our immigrant and refugee community. We should never lose sight of that. So if Washington, D.C. is going to become a swamp of fear and hate, it is up to us here in our community to bring people together around a table to find real solutions that will inspire generations to come. Thank you. And next, I would like to introduce, um, I almost said Representative, Commissioner Jessica <laughs> Vega-Peterson. And also, I wanted to um, acknowledge Commissioner Sharon Myron and Commissioner Lori Stegman, who are here with us today. Thank you. Good afternoon. We know we are a nation of immigrants. Immigrants are part of the fabric of what makes America a thriving, vibrant nation. When we talk about immigrants, we're talking about our neighbors and our nannies, our contractors and our line cooks, our entrepreneurs and our in-laws. We are talking about families like mine who came to this country in pursuit of opportunity, just as millions have had before them. I will not allow fear mongering to tarnish the contribution that my family and I have made to this country. Both sides of my families have faced hostilities. My father is Irish, and for many years in this country, the Irish were unwelcome and belittled. On my mother's side, they came to this country from Mexico, seeking safety and opportunity for their family. To listen to the demonization of immigrants and the talk of building a wall on the southern border angers me and belittles the contributions that families like mine have made. Since the November election, we've seen more pronounced discrimination against people and immigrants of color, which is no less short-sighted now and so no less immoral than it was when our country feared an Italian mayor, a German Supreme Court justice, or an Irish Catholic president. We are better than this. We will continue to welcome and value immigrants and refugees. To the immigrants and refugees struggling to understand what this means and wondering how they are welcome in this country, I want you to know, I value you, I welcome you, and I will fight to keep our community and our families together. Our inclusive community will not bend amid pressure from anyone. We will continue to work with our community groups and law enforcement agencies to uphold local and state laws and the U.S. Constitution to preserve the safety and dignity of all of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Sheriff Mike Reese. Please come to the stage. Thank you very much. I have some prepared remarks and then I'm happy to take questions. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come today and speak. I hope this action will help uh, assure people uh, in Multnomah County of our law enforcement role and responsibility. It is vital to our mission of community safety that members of this community feel comfortable calling 911 to report crimes without fear of local law enforcement enforcing ICE detainers. I believe we have a responsibility to nurture a relationship of trust with everyone in our community. When our community trusts us, they share information about crime and victimization that they may not otherwise share, and that makes us all safer. MCSO's mission does not include an enforcement role in federal immigration law. If we were to participate with ICE in arresting or detaining people based solely on their immigration status, it would make our job of protecting and serving our community much harder. In all of its public safety roles, patrol, investigations, and operations of our jail facilities, MCSO follows state and federal law. As a result, we don't use our resources or personnel to enforce federal immigration law, nor do we hold people pursuant to ICE detainers? As sheriff, I am incredibly proud to stand with Multnomah County's elected leaders and our community leaders in this commitment. Together, we will build and restore community trust. Thank you very much. And uh, last but not least, we have the legal director of ACLU, Matt Dos Santos. Thank you. It's right here. Uh, hi. Uh, Hi everyone, thanks for coming. My name is Matt Dos Santos and I am the legal director of the ACLU of Oregon. And perhaps more importantly today, I am also the fir uh, a first generation immigrant um, to a Latino family coming from Brazil, Portugal, and Mexico. Uh, President Trump's announcement today 
is a danger is a danger to immigrant communities in our communities of color and to the constitutionally protected separation of powers of the states. His announcement is a new and dark day where racial profiling is the norm and criminality is defined by a mere accusation, not a lawful conviction. Building a wall is not an answer. It's certainly not the answer. President Trump's fantasy of sealing the border with a wall is driven by racial and ethnic bias that disgraces America's proud traditions of protecting vulnerable migrants. The DHS deportation force has a track record of racial profiling and excess for excessive force abuses, and expanding it will further erode the rights of millions, of millions of people who call our border communities home. Locking up asylum seekers who pose no danger or flight risk is unconstitutional and benefits nobody except private prison corporations and politicians looking to score rhetorical points. The ACLU will see the Trump administration in court if they go down this road. <clears throat> we will not be scared away by Trump's uh, empty threats. President Trump is threatening to punish localities for establishing constitutional safeguards and for protecting the public safety of their entire communities. He may hope that local officials will buckle under his threats, but they have been preparing to defend their policies and we will stand with them in court. Cities and counties have no legal obligation to help enforce federal immigration laws. In ceasing this voluntary cooperation, cities and counties can take important steps today to ensure that they do not serve as a pipeline to deportation. We're all safer when victims, witnesses can come forward and get help. Entangling police with immigrant enforce immigration enforcement further undermines trust and public safety. Forcing local law enforcement to act as federal immigration agents will push immigrant communities into the shadows. It will be havoc on our criminal justice system as scared immigrants do not show up for court, stop reporting crime, and refuse to act as witnesses. Oregon law is clear. Our precious resources cannot be spent on federal immigration law enforcement. State and local budgets have been cut to the bone. ICE shouldn't force locals to do its job. Only our state and local police can enforce state and local laws. Especially in these times of tight budgets, they need to concentrate on local priorities and local crimes that the federal government won't enforce. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, so we'd now like to take the opportunity for a few minutes of Q&A. So speakers, um, please come to the stage. And press, uh, feel free to ask us questions. Sure, I'd like to ask, ask you a question first. Are you, Certainly. I, I'm sure there, there's a lot of unknowns of how this is going to be implemented or enforced. Are you expecting or bracing for any kind of monitoring of your interaction with the public or an audit of incident reports to see if your deputies are, you know, doing anything wrong or, or turning a blind eye to illegals? Again, I think that there's a lot that's unknown in the statements that were made today, and uh, I can't predict what may occur at the federal level. Certainly, I want to reinforce to people in our community, we're going to follow current state law. We're going to continue doing the things that we've been doing for a long time in building trust in our community, particularly with communities that have historically had uh, difficult relationships with law enforcement. Maybe they come from countries where law enforcement uh, is uh, not to be trusted and here we want to reinforce that we work for everybody we want to uh, really establish a relationship of trust with everyone in our community it makes us all safer trick for you uh, do you come up do you start any math on federal funding and if that money should go away what you do uh, or do you just wait and see what happens well there's really no way to predict at this point what the actions that we're taking today are going to look like um, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to to stand up to bullying and threatening and to say we're not going to take it. Yes, federal funds are extremely important to the work that we do to provide services, but we can't just be bullied around by someone who wants to enforce um, rules and laws that we think are detrimental to the very fabric and core of who we are as a, a country. Do you know a percentage of, 
of how much of the county's budget is federal funded? I don't have that off the top of my head, and I don't know. I, the, specific, the specifics are not there as to which departments will be cutting their funding. or I, I, I just know that there's been some threats, and um, but I also know that we have, um, we have legal community, we have the citizenry, we have um, all the folks who live here in Multnomah County who are going to stand up with us today. Is Multnomah County officially a sanctuary county? Oregon is officially a sanctuary state, and um, I think but some cities have made past resolutions. Right. As yes, well. we have we have passed resolution in Multnomah County as well. Would you like to see the Supreme Court weigh in on this issue as soon as possible? I mean, it's obviously that there are constitutional issues, U.S. constitutional issues. Is that something that's possible, or you'd like to push for? Would you like Oregon's Attorney General to push for? Um, I, I would hope that our entire state would come together um, around um, the laws that we have on our Oregon Constitution. And I think what we're doing today is, is the first step in that. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And um, this really is just, just the beginning. Um, and we expect to be together a lot more frequently after this. <laughs> thank you.